gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of Paranormal Buzz Radio or its sponsors. Use of any materials produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is strictly prohibited. For information on everything Paranormal Buzz Radio has to offer, visit our website, paranormalbuzzradio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Listener discretion is advised. Paranormal Buzz Radio is proud to present Girls vs. Ghost Media's The Dr. Gina Show with Gina Marie. Gina is a psychic medium and an intuitive counselor who has a bachelor's degree in psychology, master's degree in counseling, and a doctorate degree in occupational therapy. The Dr. Gina Show is live on Spreaker every other Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, 6 Pacific, right here on Paranormal Buzz Radio. Be sure to follow Gina on all her social media. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your host, Gina Marie. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your host, Gina Marie. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Dr. Gina Show. Thank you for listening. And whoever's listening to the pre recorded show, thank you. And always thank you, Shay and Matt, for being the producers of this show. So I'm in Jersey tonight, guys, so I can't see chat, but Shay is able to see it, and she's responding. And when we bring Shay on, we'll be able to interact in chat. So make sure you participate in chat. Let us know you're out there. Put your questions in, and I will be getting to chat like usual, like 20 minutes into the sh- before the show ends. So Get ready with your questions. So tonight, like I said, I'm in Jersey. So just to give you guys a quick little scenario of what's going on with me. So most of you, if you know me, anything about me, you follow me on any of my social medias. I'm a big animal lover and definitely for some reason, not that I'm a more cat lover than dog really because I really love both. It's just that for some reason, There's always stray cats and there's not really stray dogs in this part of like where we live in Jersey, New York and Philly, not many stray dogs. Like I know there is in California and LA, but here we have a lot of stray cats, not in Manhattan where I live, but in this part of Jersey. So if you guys have been seeing my Facebook post, I always like to support the Gloucester City cat association so if you guys could follow them and they really help these stray cats so today I have one of my stray cats I brought him in tonight because it's a little cold out and you know if you ever brought a stray cat or a feral cat in you should know like they get scared right because they've never really been in a house they're nervous well Shady is just sitting here chilling with me like he hasn't stopped crying since he's been in the house, he feels like, I think he's probably at least nine. I know he's been out there for years. So he's like, this is probably like his first night that he actually got to like sit on a rug. So, so he is my co-host tonight. He won't be doing much talking, but (laughs) he's giving us a lot of good energy. So I hope you feel the shady energy out there. So like tonight's show, I'm going to talk about body, mind, and soul. And the balance of that. So I like to think about probably when I was in school for physical therapy, I was always like, that was probably like, that was in, I graduated in 2006, so like 2002 or three, when I was in undergrad. It was all about me learning about 
the body, right? I was a personal trainer then, and um, my undergraduate was in psychology. So I had a degree in counseling. I was a counselor for marriages. I did relationship counseling. I did drug and alcohol counseling. I had my undergrad from NYU. So I was a counselor while I was in school for physical therapy. So I was dealing a lot with the mind at first. And then I learned a lot about the body as a physical therapist. And so I was always big on like that whole mind-body connection because I had the degree in psychology. I was a counselor and, you know, I was in school for physical therapist and I was a personal trainer. So I was I knew a lot about the body, and then I wanted to get my doctor's degree, and I got my doctor's degree in rehabilitation medicine, occupational therapy, learning about, like, habits and routines and making habits and routine back with that body and mind, that whole body-mind connection. And I wasn't really, uh, obviously, been a medium since birth, but I was not so, like, I didn't, wasn't, like, spiritual. I didn't really understand. Yes, I knew I talked to dead people, but I didn't have that whole spiritual connection, what the importance of it was. Even when I was younger, my, when my mother was killed. My, she wasn't allowed to be buried in a Catholic church or have a Catholic ceremony. My grandmother had turned against the Catholic church because she had had me and she wasn't married. So the church that my mother and my grandmother were a part of wouldn't let her have that Catholic mass. So by the time I came around, my grandmother was so anti-Catholic or anything. She didn't put me through any of any Catholic schools like my whole family had went to before me. She was against it. So I had went to public school and even some of my friends were going to like CCD and stuff. And I didn't, (laughs) my grandma didn't want me to have any religious training. So my spirituality was kind of, no, no, and boy, I really, I didn't have any at all, but I was big on this whole body, body and mind, and in order to train the body, I had the mind, and then when I was getting my doctorate, the whole habits and, and routine, still really not into spirituality, definitely a medium learning that I was a psychic, a lot of predictions, a lot of things that I just thought I was good at, didn't really know why, but spirituality or spiritual awakening, I, didn't even come into my life, really. It started coming into my life about mm, four years ago, along with my readings. I started kind of listening to a little bit of Abraham Hicks and kind of bringing some of that spirituality in, but not so much, like not a lot. Then I went through, like I always talk about, and I tell you guys that I went through some spiritual journeys. And right when I did that, which was about three years ago, that first journey I did, it's like plant medicine, the first journey I did was like a complete put me into like spiritual awakening, like dark night of the soul, which I, like I said, was like three years ago, completely changed my life. And then after I had done my first one, which was three years ago, then about a year and a half ago, I had done like three more of them all in like one night. So I did probably like four total. Um, And that just really, really put me over the edge. And I just started really getting into like spirituality and put it together with all my schooling and just the fact that I was a medium since birth and, you know, a witch and natural healer too, since I was obviously a child and putting it all together. And lately I've been getting a lot of messages channeled to me what I need to do. And I always, you know, I do a lot of gallery readings where I'll bring a lot of the past people back to life and a lot of messages from, you know, past loved ones. And when you have a reading with me, I channel the counselor. Even here when I'm doing the show, it's like kind of back and forth. I'm channeling the council. I'm getting a lot of messages from them. I also am sometimes I, when I call my client, my clients know I call myself regular Gina, just like Gina from the block, Gina from the ghetto block for sure, because I definitely had that kind of life growing up. Definitely, yes, I'm a doctor. I went to you know, Ivy League schools, but that's because I was really smart. It's nowhere near the life that I grew up in. 
in the neighborhoods that I grew up in. I was like definitely odd one out in, in Jefferson and all NYU, my schools I went to. I was not that typical person that I had graduated with. I didn't have, I had a completely different life for sure. So lately I've been hearing from my guides through my meditations or just really just like walking around or waking up in the middle of the night and hearing that I need to really look and, and combine everything I need to give my clients more of a body, mind, and soul connection. And when I had first started my company, my rehabilitation company, my logo was three circles. It was body, mind, and spirit. So it's kind of putting spirit into it, kind of just like the fact that, you know, you had to be good to people. That's, that's the kind of line of spirit I was on. Be nice to animals, you know. I called it spirit even then. And, th- and now what I call spirit, you know, everyone has their own thing. I call spirit, like spirit, when I talk to spirit. I talk to spirits, you know. I talk to dead people. I talk to guides. I talk to angels. I talk to spirits. The soul is what I like to refer to, and everyone has a different version, I'm sure, but what I understand, what I hear, soul is what is in my living body right here. It, and once my body dies, my soul is my spirit. That's how I look at it. You know, feel free to put in the chat what you might believe or what you say, you know, I'm not even saying I'm right. I'm just saying this is my, what I get from it. That's it. So I have started just um, a a group right now and I have 11 members in this group and we're going to look at the body, mind, and soul. And it's going to be like a lot of channeling. I'm going to see how this group goes with these members and then I will expand it to more clients that I work with. Right now, it's a, a lot of clients and a couple of my friends that I've worked with. So getting into that, I now know that those three circles that I've had for my logo since I had started my Fit Plus Wellness Rehabilitation business, which was years, probably four or five years ago, once I started that, to see where it takes me, where, where spirit has taken me to this point, I'm now looking at those three circles of, yes, when we come here, we're given this body, right? We have to have this body to navigate through life. And we're also given this mind, this mind. So why do we have this brain? Because this brain is the thing that really fucks us up down here in the human world. The brain is what fucks us up, this like subconscious mind, right? And a lot of us, or the ego, you can call it. The ego is a lot to do with, a lot of the, the, the mind is ruled. The ego is, is driven by the mind. That's how I like to look at it. So the ego is what's a killer of a lot of us down here. Because the, in, in, in the ego, and you know how I always go back to this emotional scale. I post about the emotional scale. I, I mean, that has to be one of my tattoos I have to get. The emotional scale has changed my life. The Hawkins emotional scale, always on my Instagram, you can find it. Let's say I always talk about like the lowest of that emotional scale, which is down there in fear, shame, and guilt. Those are the lowest. If you're in the middle somewhere, there's anger, and right above anger is neutral, climbing towards the top of peace, joy, and happiness. And then you really get to enlightenment on that emotional scale. So I take that part, and I, that's what I consider here the soul, right? It's driven by the, this emotional scale. Now, this mind is what screws us up. It's supposed, we're supposed to have this mind because we need to learn, you know, autonomic function. We need to learn how to, oh, we've got to kick our foot, this body we're given. We've got to raise our hand. This is what helps the body maneuver. It's kind of like... This is it, the computer, the brain, right? But we come here with the brain and, you know, a lot of people have had different childhood experiences, um, whether good or bad, and it gets programmed in, in your computer, right? The mind you're given, in the subconscious mind. And that programming is very difficult to break. 
I still, regular Gina, Gina from the block, <laughs> is still trying to deprogram my subconscious mind of things that have been in my mind from birth, you know, things that were in my mind, things that I've experienced through love, through relationships that were good or bad. I still have them in my subconscious mind. I'm trying to deprogram that. I still have an ego. I try to pretty much kill that ego out. You know, I don't want to be driven by my ego, which would cause me to have a lot, you know, jealousy or need to look good for other people or have approval of other people or to feel like I need more. Whatever, you know, that ego is or is driven by, it, it's, it's not a good thing. We, we need to really control that ego, which is, again, I refer to this as the subconscious mind. I work so hard and have been working so hard to deprogram my subconscious mind, and I see it in my clients, their subconscious mind programming. And that's why I'm going to start these workshops and these groups, so pay attention. I'll be putting them out there because I see how important it is to deprogram that, that mind that has screwed us up. That's not why we were given this mind, but we're supposed to use it for different things, but we're using it as our main computer system. Our soul, our emotions, our heart, our feelings, that's supposed to be how we're living through our soul. But hey, just like our, our subconscious mind, people are like, oh, I, this, this, is, this is again my opinion. Please feel free to put yours in the chat. This is what I hear. Um, that subconscious mind, some people I hear them say, oh, well, that's programmed in your DNA from past lives. Well, I don't find that to be true. I do see whatever your subconscious mind, your mind was programmed with is from the time you're born because this is a new brain and mind you have. You didn't have that with your last life. This brain, this mind that you have now wasn't with any of those past lives. So there's no way anything is coming in that mind. It, that's not it. So it should be attached to the ego from any past life. No. What does come in? It comes in through the soul. So you have many past lives. Some of us, some of us don't. But have many past lives that come in through the soul, okay? So yes, that's what I always talk about. Learn your lessons because sometimes those lessons come back because there's no time, right? Time's a time loop. So there's, you're coming back with those lessons Lessons, lessons that you might have had 20 souls before this, right? That's coming in. So that you still have. Those are still things that you have pieces of, for sure. That's nothing to do with your subconscious mind. Nothing at all. That's my opinion. However, that's why a lot of times I, I always talk about, you know, hashtag elevate your soul, hashtag test your fucking test, because my, you know, I do know some of my past lives, so just using me as an example, one of my past lives, this last past life, you know, I was, um, I was a, um, I was Mexican in Miami. I was, I lived with a whole bunch of people and I had a whole bunch of kids and I died really young, like 32, 33, young, and I left a bunch of kids. So in my soul, my DNA, I come here, you know, now in my 30s and don't have kids, never really wanted kids. Why not? Well, because most likely, look what my last life, I had left a whole bunch of kids, right? And I didn't even have the same fathers <laughs> in that last life. And um, I came right back after that last life. I didn't waste much time. The first time I went to Miami, which was like six or seven years ago, and I went with my, my boyfriend at the time, who was Argentinian, so he knew, he used to live in Miami, he knew all the streets and everything. I was telling him where to go. I was like, I just left there. Then I, when I did past life on myself, I realized I had died and came right back. I didn't waste time, which I, you can do. That's a whole other thing I'll get into at one time. But so I bring those things back because that's still my soul, right? So I remember that just like the subconscious mind can remember, oh, I got hurt in love and now they don't want to go in love again, right? Well, the soul remembers, holy shit, like, do I really want to have all these kids? Because look what I left them all. And, you know, I didn't like that feeling, right? Didn't, because I had to leave them. 
um, at such a young age, and, and pretty much the fathers really weren't in the life of all of them. So there's things that you bring back into your soul, right? So it's always like you want to elevate your soul level. So for me, again, just talk about one of my past lives. You know, I know several, but just talking about that most recent, I was unlucky in love. You know, I didn't have a husband. I have kids, but not a husband. I didn't have that relationship or whatever. And um, yes, I've been engaged. And I've been with the same guy for 10 years and always had my whole life since, you know, I was little, young. I've always had a relationship with boyfriend, except for these last four years, I really haven't had such a committed relationship. However, I just know that one of those hashtag pasture test tests for me was to have enough security to be completely in. Because, yeah, I was engaged. I had four engagement rings, actually. But I would never set the date or I just, I couldn't. It was like, for me, I would just, it's hard for me to really trust or believe in, no, this is it. I just, it's, it's difficult. And do I want to try yeah, I, I'm, I'm planning this. is like we keep going with my spiritual awakening. I'm going to be in a relationship again. It's a limited relationship that I'm actually going to, I don't know if I'll ever get married. I don't even know if I believe in that. You know, it's another thing. It's just a piece of paper for me. But I just know that it's something that I bring with me, and that's with your soul. So that goes back again to those three circles, right? The mind, the body, and the soul. It's so much work to integrate and you know I have a degree in nutrition as well so I look at this right so I go back to the mind I have a degree in psychology I was a counselor I, I know how to work that I did it for years work with clients I go over here to the body I was in school for physical therapy occupational therapy I know the body I, I, I was a degree in nutrition so I put this all together what's missing like I was always wondering why did I spend so many years in school I was smart easy. I got put up grades in school. Why was I so smart? Why? Because obviously God was bringing me to get me to hear the last piece that was missing was that soul for me. And now I'm able to look at the whole soul and say, hey, I need all three of these circles to make it down here in this world, right? To make it, to elevate my soul level. It's not just so easy. I have to work so hard at I work out, if you guys know me, I train, I work out, I train martial arts, I train all the time. I got to keep my body, my movement, everything. I, you know, I hate yoga. Everyone knows I hate yoga, but I, I do it. I hate it. I really do. It's boring. I keep trying to like it, but I, I do it because I'm trying to keep my body fluid like that. And then that that part of that all goes with my spiritual connection. I, I, I meditate. It was really hard for me. Really, really hard. I hated it. Getting better at it can't say I love it, but I, I'm trying. I'm trying to, I've never even been to a sauna, a spa before. I just recently went. Like, I keep adding whatever it is that body needs, right? To, so I can be, and not everybody needs the same thing, for sure. Everybody's different. And every client I worked with as a trainer, as a therapist, I always gave a, you know, no, not everyone, everyone's the same, everyone's different. So then I, then I go over here and I go, okay, what does this soul need? Because, <laughs> Hey, if anyone knows me, my soul needs a lot of work, and a lot of people's soul does. It depends on what you come here for. I need to get my soul right. I need to hashtag pass my fucking test, not just for me, but for all you guys. I need to be on a level that I don't look like. It's just like when I was a trainer, and um, you know, I had to try to you know live that lifestyle because who wants to hire the trainer? that is just sitting there just looking like they're not really a trainer. However, they have a lot of book knowledge, you know, which is, is true, but you, you want to practice what you preach. You want to kind of be good, just like my jiu-jitsu professors. Like, I want to make sure that my professor, who my professors are all, you know, amazing black belts. You just want to make sure that whatever you're doing, you're, you're pretty good at it, right? <laughs> so I need to hashtag pass my fucking test i got to watch the emotional scale for me because I need to help you guys. And in order for me to get there, I need to get myself there, right? So I'm kind of like experimenting with myself as I help all you guys and watch my clients grow. So that's why I'm really going to be working on lately 
more so now. Of course, I'm still going to talk to dead people. I'm still going to do galleries. I'm still going to give mediumship readings. I'm still going to give psychic readings. But I want to concentrate on really helping my client look at this three-circle connection and see what it means individually because everyone's separate. Everyone has a different program. But also look at some of the themes that works together for people. And as I have my doctorate degree in occupational therapy, I studied habits, routines, lifestyle redesign. Why? I used to wonder, why did I pick this? Why? But now I know why. Because it's so integral to help all you guys to get where I'm going to bring myself and everyone I work with. Looking forward to this. I definitely know that because of my spiritual awakening, my whole dark night of the soul, I've changed so much in four years, but three years, two years, and see, since, since August, I, August till now, August is my birthday, but I just, I will, some of the things I look back on three months ago, even two months ago, I, but especially since August, like, I, I would never settle for myself to do or participate in some of the things that I did. And that's where everybody gets when you start looking at these circle connections and you start working on each and every one of them. You can't just work on one. I'm, I'm telling you, you can't just work on one. It's an integral part to work on all three because they all go together. It's, and it's hard, especially like, you know, for my type of work as well. I just had done a gallery reading with like almost a hundred people, which is huge. And just, you know, talking to their dead relatives, ancestors, to channeling the council was so energy draining for me. Like, I literally almost for three weeks couldn't do a reading. I was that done. And that's why now, like, I will do possibly one reading a day now because I, the energy that I spend and expand is so much because I do this now full time. And I, I will still do my, my shows here. And I still participate on um, with Weird Weekends, and I do Behind the Third Eye. And I still have my page that I work in, and now my group. But it just it takes so much energy for me to keep all three of my circles in flow. It's a lot of work. And, and I can't say, you know, I break down too. I'm human. And one of my friends said to me the other day, you know, she's just really, well, she's a client, actually, who's coming a friend, really. And another one of my clients who's becoming a friend, Michelle, and a few of my other clients who've become friends, they get to know, like, regular Gina, I call her. And, man, regular Gina is fucking nuts, man. I'm fucking regular human. I wanna, I'm want i screaming. I just want to punch people in their face. <laughs> like, I just want to – I hate everybody. Like, I just – I'm a fucking nut. And that's why I have to train martial arts because Gina from the block, I grew up on the block, man. I grew up – crazy my you know I grew up with all men my uncles I didn't have a you know a mother I didn't have I had my grandmother but I was living with my uncles and yeah god it was just a crazy life I grew up a crazy 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 life and my boyfriends that I lived with after that they lived crazy lives so I just Gina from the block is it, not that spiritual Gina I'm just like out there just being fucked up so I need to really center myself a lot and try to go back. And I, I remember being little, and I was talking about this with one of my clients, too. And I, and I was um, as young back as I can remember. I used to watch this show called Bewitched. <laughs> and I loved it. Obviously, since I could talk, my grandma would say, I would tell her, you know, she said, well, what are we going to do when you grow up? I was like, I'm going to be a witch. You know, obviously, I was born born now you can't change that but she'd be like oh no don't tell anyone that Gina <laughs> but um I used to watch that show Bewitched and Tabitha she was one of the little witches on there I used to when I was doing something bad or I was always doing something and my grandma would say something like why did you do that and I'd be like oh no no Tabitha did that I I would blame it on this, you know my other person my other personality Tabitha said that or I was always Tabitha and as I got older, I started watching, um, I think it was the Adams Family and Morticia Adams. So then as a you know, young teenager, teenager like me and my friends would hang out, meet different guys. And I would always tell them my name was Morticia. Morticia, even when I was a dancer, my dancing name, one of my dancing names 
was Marticia. And I was also Jessica for Jessica Rabbit. I had red hair then. <laughs> but I was Marticia, right? Because that was my other personality. And for a while there, even when I was little or teenager, I used to think I was fucking, I am fucking nuts, but I used to think I was fucking whack. I used to think, man, am I civil? Because I think I have two personalities here. And, and we, me and my friends would go out drinking. And like I said, I would tell everyone that was my name, these guys I would meet. I'm more It would be like I took someone else out. And I, my friends would always be, like, even in high school, like, <laughs> I remember my teachers were saying, like, sometimes, like, you're just, we don't know who you are. I heard it in college. I heard it in grad school. And, and even my boyfriend of mine used to say, like, I was, like, extra strength Tylenol. Back then there was, like, extra strength Tylenol was like killing people and he's like sometimes you don't know if you get the good one or the bad one and it was like I really had these two personalities and it wasn't until recently I realized like it wasn't so much I had two personalities but there is again Gina regular Gina Gina from the block Gina whose subconscious mind is Gina right the person I am or that my higher self my higher self my soul I'm a channel I'm a direct channel since I was a child so I realized, like, I was back and forth with, was I channeling, you know, my higher self? Was I channeling another spirit? Because now I get it. It's not so much split personality, right? It is, it was a channel. So then I started thinking about it because I was always intrigued by Sybil, right? These different personalities. You think, like, I know for a fact that some souls have exit points and another soul could come in a body at a different time while that body still lives. Like I've seen it. I've talked to souls that I know that happens. I, you know, I also know that, man, there's souls that come into other bodies when people are drinking or, you know, I've seen, I've seen it as a psychic medium. I've seen everything. So then I wonder, like, it's not so much the personality. It's, it's, it's different. There's different souls that are living there. That's what it was. So that's what happens sometimes. Like if you're talking to me and regular Gina is so different than if I'm channeling. Even when I'm on this show, I'm, I'm channeling a lot. You guys can't see, but if you have a reading with me, my eyes do something different. I shift. I look somewhere different. So I'm, I'm continually channeling. I Certain spirits I allow to come talk and channel through me. I know who I can and can't have that happen with. So, yeah, it's just, it's a continuation for me because it, it's so easy for me to transcend to the other side. Like, I just, it, that's why I can talk to dead people so well with so much detail because it's easy for me to just step over into that other side, just, you know, walk over there, talk to my higher self. It's just not even until recently I started realizing what it was. It was just like my higher self, <laughs> I remember the guy I was seeing well, he was sleeping and I was sleeping and he's, I heard my higher self talking to his higher self and it was like, oh, this is where she leaves you now. And his higher self was like, ha ha, high five, we'll see you in a little bit. And I just remember hearing that. And at that time, I wasn't thinking of not hanging out with him, not seeing him no more. But then I did. And then I thought back and I was like, holy shit, like I, like our souls already knew this was the game. <laughs> this was how it's going to go. This is a, a, pretty much a soul contract that we had made with each other. And we were just humanly living it out. And I heard that. I heard it because my, I heard my higher self talk to his higher self. I, it was so crazy because I've never really heard that. Now, recently, and I always say this, and you guys always hear me say it, yeah, people will text me, my clients, my friends, not so much my friends anymore, but sometimes clients will text me and, and they'll ask me a question, you know, because I, I just finished a reading with them or something or I read for them a few days ago and they'll say, hey, you know, Gina, what do you think of this, this, and this, this guy, right? I'm just fucking regular Gina. I'm on the subway. I'm at Starbucks. I don't fucking know. Like, I, I have no idea. I'm not in a session. <laughs> you know, people don't get that. Like, I am just regular fucking Gina. You, you don't get channeled higher self Gina talking to the council, talking to my higher self, unless I do, you know, I do my protection on, I know how to transcend myself over there. Otherwise, don't listen to me because I'm fucking up. Gina's fucking up. <laughs> I'm fucking shit up. So you send me a text message and you want to know what you do with this guy. I'm like, fuck him. Dump that motherfucker. Would, 
would I say that if I'm a Gina, the higher self, Dr. Gina, whatever, getting a channel? I, pro- I, don't, I don't think so. So you got to be, anyone out there that's my client, just know it. You know, they're starting, I get sometimes tired of explaining to myself, hey, man, like, I can't answer that question. I don't walk around like that. I, I don't, when I was younger, when I didn't know how to shut off, when I, I was stepping back and forth with both worlds, I didn't know how to shut off, but dead people were talking to me all the time. Like, I, I was fucking going crazy. You know, about seven, eight years ago, I learned how to not live in both worlds, to experience my human, because that's why I came here. I don't live in, in my soul level all the time. I can't. It, it drives me fucking nuts. I need to be human down here, too. But I, I do, and I, I do go back and forth. But I, I don't know the answer to the question if I'm regular me. I just, I don't. I got to be in, when I'm doing this show, I'm completely open. I'm channeling. I'm regular, Gina. I'm talking to you guys about my human experience, the school I went to. I had human experience. But I, I'm channeling, too. It's back and forth because I had that open connection. So it's basically like you're talking to my human, but I have my channel open. So you got my higher self. I'm channeling the council. And I'm, I'm back and forth with that. But when I'm just walking around shut off, I'm, I'm pushing people over on the subway. I'm fucking get the fuck out of my way. I'm just regular fucking New Yorker Gina, just fucking shit up, living my human life, going through the same thing as everyone else. So, so you guys know that difference here. <laughs> Don't know what anyone's saying in chat yet, but I hope you're putting some stuff in. So when I bring Shane, we're going to discuss it. So anyway, um, I tried to get as much as I could in here. Um, my follow me on my Instagram with psychic medium Dr. Gina on Paranormal Buzz Radio, also Weird Weekend, and um, I also check me out on Amazon Prime, Wicked Witches. We did our first series, and we'll have some more to come. So check those out. All right. So um, I always do a universal reading. If this is your first time listening to the Dr. Gina show, so when I do a universal reading, I use the tarot cards. I if you do a reading with me, that this is my psychic channel when I do tarot cards. Yes, I'm always a medium. Uh, I don't really know any mediums that aren't psychic, but um, I, I do know psychics that are not mediums. I am both. So when I do this, I ask spirit, how am I going to do this? Because I don't take callers when I started with this new um, new platform that we're doing here when I was with Girls vs. Ghosts. We did take callers, so I was able, I channeled because I need energy of somebody to give me permission when I channel um, to talk to their relatives, whatever. So I asked Spirit, how am I going to do it in this platform? And they told me to go revert back to my psychic channel and use the, the tarot cards. And of course, again, like I'm always open to Spirit, which will come in. So this reading that I'm going to do, I use the Rider Weight depth of cards, and I usually just pick five for this. And it's a, a universal message that I give, and whoever resonates with, it resonates with, and um, I always do a manifestation. As you guys know, what I'm, I do, the manifestations, they're small, so I kind of tell you what to look for, kind of like manifest finding something at the end of the reading, and all my clients work on that, and I love when you guys give me messages in my inbox, and like, oh, I found the sword, Gina, and you send me those things, because guess what? When you find a sword and you send me the inbox, hey, I manifested it. I might have manifested it through you because you told, you sent me the sword. But I always get my manifestations one way or another. <laughs> All right. So here is the universal reading. See if this resonates with you guys. I have my Rider Weight deck card. I'm going to shuffle them. And I'm going to pick five cards. And my stray cat, Shady, is still hanging out. He's in heaven. He spent his first night in the house. He's coming over here. Too bad you guys can't see him. He's so handsome, but he's on Facebook if you want to check him out. So he's going to do this reading with me. Hi, Shade. Oh, he's tearing. He's so happy. He's giving us good energy. Okay, so here's the reading. So just pay attention. So it looks like you're going to have, this is, I have not done a bad, sad reading. So every time I do these universal readings, I love them. This looks like this is your dream come true. Like your, all your dreams are coming true. Everything you wanted in your life, um, manifestations, they're all happening. All your manifestations are coming true here. You're definitely doing some type of traveling. 
my poor little cat is choking here. You know, stray cat. He's all right, though. Okay, so you're definitely doing some a lot of traveling. It looks like you're going on different ventures. And this must be for a girl because this reading shows me that you are getting your guy, man. He's been working on himself. He's been doing a lot of work spiritually as well. So you're doing a lot of work spiritually, and he's doing a lot of work spiritually, and you two are going to come together. You're both going through some type of, like, phase where you're both doing some inner work, and you're getting ready to come together and bring everything it is that you both learn together to make a really good team here. looks like both the spiritual work you're doing, and you're both going to come together and bring both of your spiritual sides together. So that is your universal reading. I hope you liked it. The manifestation is to look for a crown. So find a crown. So manifestations are just like, tell the universe, this is what I want. Kind of just like people that want to manifest to have a new car or a new house or whatever it is. It's so simple. So I like to start with small manifestations and then you can work on your big ones. So the small one is to find a crown. Okay, so guys, I hope you like that. Now I'm going to bring Shay. Shay comes on, and this is where we go into chat. So I hope you guys type some questions in, and Shay's going to read them for me, and we're going to see what's going on. So hello, Shay, you on there? Let's see. I'm going to wait for her to come on. Give her a second. All right, while I'm waiting for Shay, hopefully I didn't lose some connection here. <laughs> And while I'm waiting for her, I will keep talking because I can't see chat. So I, I don't know here. what's going on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, Shay. Hello. Hello. <coughs> All right. So did you hear Did you hear the cat coughing? <laughs> he was coughing. He was I so couldn't cute. hear him coughing over myself coughing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, he just started coughing. It's so cute that this little stray cat's in here with me. All right, so um, do we have any questions in chat? Um, we have a, a couple things coming in. Okay. Um, uh, Jennifer liked the read the universal reading. Carol Ann said she's going to Italy. Great things have been happening. Good, 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 good. Um, and then am I? Mm-hmm. Hi, it's M I E me. I, I I'm Michelle. All right, thank you. I I couldn't tell if it's an I or an L. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, she just joined. Forgot to ask about my 2020 outbook per spirits. Let me know if something comes to you now, or if you can do a universal reading for me now. Okay. I, who asked? Whoever asked that question, which I'm not sure. She asked for what twenty twenty what? Outlook per spirits. Okay. I and I always tell you guys this and I'm sorry. I am not able to do one on one readings because for me, when I do them, I work through through spirit. So when I'm doing these shows, our questions and our chats are gonna be about the show. I'm not able I mean I guess I really could if I wanted to, but it's just too much energy for me to do that per type of this show. So I'm going to answer questions about anything we talked about on tonight's show. So, okay. sorry guys. Um, Deb wants to know, what positive signs should we all look for in the new year? Positive sign? You know how you have your owl and... Oh, I see. You know, it's <laughs> my owl, he just started showing up. I don't know what that is, man. He just started showing up. Yeah. So it's not like what you should look for, a positive sign. What comes to you? It's like, what comes to you? For me, like, I forget what it was, like, how the owl first appeared. I, I don't even know. And then all of a sudden, the, he just started popping up everywhere. And even at my corner bodega yesterday, I was ordering you know, my regular tea, and I looked behind the counter, and, and there was the owl. It's like the statue of the owl. I go, how's that owl been there? Like, he just starts standing out to me. Now, one of the reasons he stands out to me is because 
you know, I'm supposed to notice him and I'm supposed to say, what is the owl about? You know, I was supposed to look him up and he keeps now standing out to me because he's on my mind. So it's keep reminding me, hey, there's the owl. Go back to what it is. It's kind of almost like a manifestation or a synchronicity when things like that happen. It's just, so what, like, what pops up to you? What, what stands out to you? Sometimes there was a point in my life where the elephant was standing out to me. I was working with the kids still then. And, like, every house I went to, like, the kid had an elephant or let's play the elephant game or to got to the point where I'm just like, this is really crazy. Like, what is it with the elephant? And I look up the elephant. So it's like, what stands out for you? And so it's not like what you should be looking for, but what's looking for you? What is making you pay attention to it? And when you see lately, the number 222 has been standing out for me. It was 333 for a long time. You know, always 333. I look up the building was 333 or, you know, my receipt was 333. But recently, 222. And I never resonated with 222. And I even went to train today. I'm, I'm in New Jersey, so I went to train in Hendo Gracie, Philly. And um, I look, I was just filming me walking in the door. And I looked, the address is 222. I was like, I've never noticed that before. Why didn't I notice it before? Because it was always there. I've trained there hundreds of times. But why didn't I notice it? Because it wasn't relevant for me at that time. Why is it standing out now? Why is 222 standing out for me now? Because now I need to pay attention to 222. 222 is giving me a message. So it's an angel number, right? Of course, I looked it up. Um, new beginnings, manifestations, um, healing, healing old relationships. Like That's 222. That's what it's now important for me. I, I probably walked by 333 a million times now. It's not standing out to me, but it was for a long time because that's the message. It pulls you to it. So I hope that answered the question. So so <laughs> look for uh, things that stand out and things that, things that stand out to you with meaning and look for things that uh, have repetition. Yeah, what, what keeps, like, popping up to you and, and it just makes you go, things that make you go, hmm, you know, that. Oh, that's, that's a, a song, good song. Right? Yeah. <laughs> It is so. So just like things that make you go, hmm, yeah. hmm, yeah. you know, and it's like, hmm, hmm. And that's when you, you start trying to figure it out, like, hmm, hmm. And that's when you know. Um, Joanna would like to know, uh -huh. do manifestations uh -huh. come to show us the future or are they showing, are they showing because it's what we think about. Okay, this one is one for channel. So I'm going to tap into the council for this one because that's a great question, man. I really like that. So let's find out the answer. Hold on. So manifestations, like people have twisted manifestations down here so much. It's now like the cliche word now. Everyone's saying, oh, you have to manifest this. Let's, let's manifest that. Oh, manifest your life. Oh, this, 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 this. Manifest abundance. Oh, manifest, manifest. So um, that's a word, you know. We give words meaning. Words are meaning. So manifestation has now become a, a word, you know. Like, oh, I manifested that cup of coffee. Oh, I manifested that parking spot. Oh, I manifested that. Well, we can have anything we want, really. We're spiritual beings. What confuses us, like, is that mind. The mind is what confuses us. But it's like when you go to a Target and you put things in your cart, you can have anything you want in that, in that target. You just put whatever you want in the cart. But then, then you're fucked up because after you put everything in the cart at Target, you got to pay for that shit. you got to go pay for it. Man, and and that, what, that fucks you up because that makes you not want to put everything in the cart. Because if you had abundance of money and there was no paying at that fucking register, you put everything you want in the cart and roll out the door. Now, this is what happens down here with manifestations. We don't, we come here not saying, oh, I'm going to come to earth and I'm not going to get anything I want. We come to earth because we think we can have everything. We know we can have everything. We're spiritual beings. But what fucks us up is that line where we have to pay. And that doesn't make us put everything in the cart. We can't put everything in the cart because we're held back by the fucking belief that we don't have the money to pay for it when we get to that register. That's the same thing with manifestations. We have it. It's here. But what's fucking us up is the register. Forget that you got to pay for this shit and just get it. We're spiritual beings. We can have anything we want. So I love that. That's fucking great. I totally channeled that and I love it and I'll probably re-listen to it. <laughs> oh, you should. It was great. 
<laughs> because what I heard from that was like, don't get so caught up in the limitation of the manifestation because it's here. And I just love that answer, man. Thanks for asking that question, Joanna, because um, Gina from the block needed to hear that. <laughs> That was a great question. <laughs> All right. Do we have anything else in there? Holly says, um, love you and your reading. Going to go, going to look for the crown. Uh, Holly, all right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So I, Any I, have, other... I also have a comment. Okay. Um, back to your, your comment about um, psychics being mediums, mediums being psychic. Mm -hmm. I want to slow it down a little bit because mm -hmm. I've only heard this one way and it's the way okay. you said it, but I don't think people understand it. So I think it deserves another five okay. seconds. So all, right. all, okay. all mediums are psychics, but uh -huh. not all psychics are mediums, correct? Right. So right. Yeah. you want to explain that a little bit? Okay, and this is how I say, you know, people might have a completely different yep. opinion. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying this is what I hear and this is what I've experienced. So, like everyone knows, since I was born, I was seeing dead people all talk. I mean, I didn't know what that meant. And um, I was always able to tell my family, my grandma, whatever, I don't like her. I don't like her. My grandma always be like, you don't like her. You don't like this. It's going to happen. You know, I always knew. Well, yes, obviously spirit was talking to me, but psychically, I knew psychic, my, when I use my psychic abilities, I read energy. So to me, it looks like I go into, I go into um, a psychic channel and I see all these little lightning bolts that come from people and I see the energy. So I start reading the energy lines that ride from people. And to me, it looks like lightning. And I take that lightning rod and I ride it from that person to wherever it goes. Could go to another person, could go to a situation. And I read everything on that psychic line, where it goes. Read, 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 read. Um, so that's my psychic ability. Did I know I was a psychic first? No. Did I know I was a medium first? For sure, because I talk to dead people. But I've never met a medium that wasn't a psychic. However, there could, it could be. Right. It could be. You know, I, but I'm just saying I haven't, and I can't even say that because it depends on what someone's definition of a psychic is. Let's, yeah. let's step back because everyone has a different definition of a medium. Even people even have different definitions of mediums. For people say I'm a medium, I, I talk to spirit, but their definition is they hear channel messages or something. To me, a medium, and this is just my opinion, again, a medium can talk to, like, I talk to, like, if you have a reading with me, I get names, I get initials, I get detail. From because I can talk to, the, from the dead people. Yes. That's how I do it. But different people say mediums are just able to feel, feel spirit. I feel spirit on the medium. I, I don't get that because for me, a medium is I meet spirit halfway. Some mediums I don't, some spirit I don't meet halfway because they stand next to me, the earth there. But when I'm channeling a spirit that's crossed over, sometimes I'm pulling them down to me because they're actually on top of me. And I pull them and I, I reach up and I go and I look for them and I connect them, I find them. So I'm kind of like meeting them, right? Kind of medium meeting them halfway or something. So that's what I believe, my definition of mediumship. Again, I know people that say she's a medium or, you know, she's a medium or something, but they mean he just can feel a spirit. So I, it depends. So when I say mediums, I believe it's a medium like myself. But again, that can be, people have different definitions. When I say psychic, I know how my psychic channel works. Like I told you, it works with that type of, and I read energy. Now other people, psych, they say they're psychic because they say they have a feeling. To me, that's an empath. You know, I'm, I'm also an empath. Like I feel things. So people are confused about the definition. But if I had to write a book, which I will write a book, I'll say if you go by what I my definition of, of it is, is that's my definition of a medium, what I just explained, and my definition of a psychic is that. And then people go into all these clairs. I have clairaudience, clair da 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 da. I have all the clairs 
every one of them. And I believe in order to be a medium, you need to have all the clairs. But that is just, again, my opinion. Some people go, I, I only have clear audience. Well, as a medium, I need all of it, man. I need clear audience. I need to hear. I need to hear sentience. I need to feel. I need to have all of it because I'm bringing it all in. It's all attacking me in order for me to be the clear medium I am, I am. So I guess it comes down to who wrote the definition. Like, the, is it the Webster Dictionary or the DSM-5 of, you know, medical? Who, like, did any, is there any medium that has wrote the dictionary of it? But I don't know. Maybe there is. But maybe I'll do it one day because <laughs> those are my definitions. Until, so, until it help? becomes a complete science, uh, like a legit mm-hmm. science, I don't know if we can. Right. Once it becomes You're right. a science, right. and someday, I don't think it will happen in my lifetime, to be honest, but someday mm-hmm. it will be a full-fledged science. And then mm-hmm. I think you can um, it, that's definitively true. Okay. label things. Right. Okay. Yeah. So for now, it's a free for all. Yeah. We don't know. That's my opinion. <laughs> Everybody make. You're right. Everyone makes up their own yeah. opinion. So nobody's wrong and nobody's right. Exactly. Everyone's just until whatever it can, is. Until There's it's no, proven, nobody's yeah. wrong or right. Exactly. Right. So people can't say, "Oh, she's not a medium." Well, what's her definition of a medium? Mm-hmm. You know, she's not. Well, she's not a fake. What's her? You know, what's the definition? My definition is maybe different than someone else's. I can't say, "Oh, they suck as a medium." There is not a medium because that's maybe not how they define themselves as a medium. Yep. You know. So it's true. There's no complete definition. And that, just as I say, as myself, as an, um, you know, an occupational therapist, right, there's so many fields. I was mean, like, what is occupational therapy? Well, you know, I worked with everything. I worked in Alzheimer's units. I worked in rehabs. I worked, I've probably, I've done every aspect of occupational therapy. And there's many, you know, peds, there's acute care, there's everything, all, Alzheimer's. I've worked in everyone. However, some people haven't, right? So you're an occupational therapist, but what's your specialty, I guess, you know? Exactly. And, and that's, not, that's not even clear. That's not even clear at all. Yeah. So it, there's no real definition. So, yes. So one day, one day. I'm going to write my definition. Right. Hey, <laughs> that's that's my, idea. That's Dr. Dina's definition. <laughs> that's my definition. When so I refer we'll to things, I always say, how the words I choose, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and, and I always make it clear, this is my opinion, or as Kelly says, this is my truth, you know, mm-hmm. this is how mm-hmm. I feel, and mm-hmm. so I stick to the words so I don't confuse myself and don't confuse the people that I'm talking to, I use the same words, so I get it. Right, and another thing is, and I know this to be myself, like, something I said 10 years ago, Five years ago might have been different. It might be different now, too. Five minutes I ago. Say, so, right. So we learned say, well, you every said, second. Yeah. You said blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, I meant blah, blah, blah then. And now yeah. I mean blah, blah, blah. Now I know so. better. Or now I grown. And, you know. <laughs> no, right. Now I'm saying something different. I said blah, blah, blah then. I said blah, blah, blah now. Hold me to whatever I said because I'll say I said it. Yeah, I said that then and I said this now. doesn't mean nothing. When, it doesn't. I, when I was 15, I thought Axl Rose was hot. Uh, now I feel differently. <laughs> Are you going to hold me to that? <laughs> yeah. You grow, I get you I learn, some, you know? I saw some of my boyfriends the time were the hottest thing yeah, ever. Let's now, not I, go I was going to find somebody better. And oh my God, he's the best thing ever. Now I look back, I was like, oh my God, like I would never ever I'm gonna kiss you and touch you again. What was but, I yeah. thinking? <laughs> That's so funny. Well, do we have anything else in the nope, chat box? that was it for questions. Okay, um, well, I want to thank everybody for listening, who's listening live. Thank you, everyone, for participating in the chat. Like, I know that a lot of people are listening. My friends are actually texting me now. Oh, great show. But, you know, they don't participate in the chat, and that's cool because not everyone wants to. But I really appreciate everyone that does, and I always want to thank Shay and Matt. Like, you guys make this all possible, and it's just a blessing. Thank you so much. You put the memes together for me and just like I'm in forever grateful that you helped pleasure. me do this and we get to talk to the clients. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful that my, my little stray cat Shady stayed with me this whole show, man. I, I don't live here in my house in Jersey all the time. As you guys know, I live in New York. 
um, if I lived in this house, this cat would be here, but, you know, my friends live here when I'm not here, you know, help me take care of the house, and they stay here, and they don't want him in here full time, so put some prayers out for a line, because this little boy, I, man, he needs to come in. I pray. Oh, man, he needs to come in. I need to talk my friend. Hey, Lenny, if you're listening, I need to talk Lenny and let him move in full time. <laughs> just, just, just manifest All right. it. Yeah, and I want Mary outside to get a house, and Leo and Sly, the whole stray group of them. They're just so cute. All right, so thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone, and have a good night. Good night, guys. All right, Shay.